be seated. Welcome now on this holy, holy night. And as we gather to celebrate the great miracle God has done in Christ, we are mindful, of course, for our servicemen and service women who are not home for Christmas this night. As we gather here, we pray blessings upon every person who is unsafe this evening. Welcome to worship. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of our Savior, let us meet our Creator in prayer. Through lush farmland and bleak alleys sweep good news of great joy. Through empty wants and desperate needs blazes a star to light our way. Through pounding turmoil and trembling fear sounds an angel chorus. Glory to God in the highest, peace to all God's people. O oh, creating God, speak to us anew this night, that we may speak boldly of you in a world that longs to be recreated in your life-giving love. In your precious Son's name we pray. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fat lean together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea.
A reading from Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. A reading from Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. A reading from Luke. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into the heavens, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger.
reading from Matthew. In the time of King Herod, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is this child who has been born King of the Jews? We observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light 
so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelled among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The phrase open house is used when you hold a party or celebration over enough hours that people can just stop by whenever they have the time. Today we've had worship services at 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., 7 p.m., 9 p.m., and 11 p.m. And when you hold that many worship services, they sort of merge into one. So in essence, we've held an open house today so that whenever in someone's busy, frenetic holiday schedule, they had the time to stop by whenever, then they could join us and listen peacefully for that spiritual truth that there is a love holding all of us. 
there is a love holding all of us. There was a motel chain who had the slogan, we'll leave the light on for you. All day long at this open house, we've left the Christ light on, and I'm sort of Tom Bodette today, just welcoming you. Since 1866, when this church was founded, 1866, it began with a simple mission, quote, to increase the love of God and neighbor, period. And now it's Christmas Eve 2003, and that is still precisely our mission, to increase the love of God and neighbor. To that increase, I want to make just one point tonight. There's a new type of science called culturometrics, And because there is now so much information digitized and put on the internet, cultural matricians can do statistical studies based on Google or or whatnot and, and learn more about culture. A recent study has been done that ranks every figure in history. They've developed an algorithm. Now, theoretically, It could rank everyone who ever lived. If they have any digital footprint, 108 billion people have lived. And and theoretically, you could rank everyone. This, This study could rank who's the two millionth most important person ever. Well, this week they came out with the top 10. Number one, by a long shot, number one is... Jesus, yes, it's Jesus. Thank God. (laughs) It's Jesus. This would have ruined Christmas Eve if he was like seven or eight, right? (laughs) He's one. He's number one by a long shot based on references and books and cultural impact. Now, when I first saw that, I I was so thrilled. Now, Now, the rest of the top ten... Number two is sort of counterintuitive. It's Napoleon. Um, But then it kind of makes sense. Number three is Muhammad. Number four is William Shakespeare. Number five, Abraham Lincoln. Number six, George Washington. Thankfully, later on down the list, Socrates just edges out Elvis Presley. Just barely. (laughs) Socrates was number 68, and Elvis Presley was number 69. Thank God. The list can be counterintuitive. Regardless of your politics, it can be counterintuitive. Barack Obama beats the Virgin Mary in that list. Regardless of your politics, that's a little strange because some people have Michelle in front of him. But no. <laughs> When I first saw that Jesus was number one, I felt this surge of energy, and I wanted to get one of those big styrofoam hands that they wave at football games with the number one. He's number one. And then I realized that's not what Jesus is like at all. He's not into any ranking of human beings. That's counter to his spirit completely. That Jesus Christ wasn't about pecking orders and who had status or who had power. That Jesus, our Jesus, would put himself last just so no one else would have to be last ever. Jesus, our Jesus, if he came across the 107th billionth person, 999 millionth, 999,000th, 999 the least significant person in all history, if he came across him, Jesus, our Jesus, would bow down to him and wash his feet. Our Jesus. He's not into this one-upsmanships or rankings at all. So tonight we should put on a big foam hand that says 108th billionth because he wants everyone else to be lifted up. 
you see how calming this would be in our world, how peaceful to no longer worry about this frenzy for status and privilege, to gather around the deep peace of the beautiful Christ child, the deep peace where all is calm. All is calm. All are welcome into this peace. All is bright. Oh, the brightness of this light, the darkness cannot overcome it. All is calm. Tonight, we sing a lullaby to this beautiful child. We sing a lullaby and we spread the light where all is calm and all is bright. Feel it now in your heart. Feel that peace. All is calm. All is bright.
holding the peace of silence together. May we accept the light into our hearts. Amen.
the miracle has happened. And now walk with him and find your joy in serving others. Amen.